We're now going to have a look at the German pronunciation, all the letters in the alphabet and how they're pronounced in the word. This is something that you will not be able to remember after you've seen it once. It's just supposed to give you an impression. Most of the pronunciation you can actually learn by listening and repeating what you hear. But sometimes we might get a bit confused when uh, we hear a certain letter pronounced in one way in one word and then it's another way in another word. And it might make it a bit easier if you know why that is and you can always come back to this lecture at a later stage and double check. So we'll start with the A. A. We have a long A as in Gabel, Gabel, and a short one as in Apfel, Apfel. Now the long vowels usually come up when it is followed by a consonant and then another vowel that produces a long vowel, Gabel. B, B. Bus. C. Now the C by itself is rarely found in the German language. It usually appears in foreign words and in that case the pronunciation is usually what it is in the original word. So we say for example Caesar and we say Kaspar for the name. Most of the time, our C appears in combination with an H. Ha. C. Ha. And the C. Ha is pronounced in different ways. If it's in the beginning of the word, we say sh, like in chemi. But some people actually pronounce it in the beginning of the word with a K and they say chemi. Chemi. Kimi, depending on the person or the region. When you have that siha appearing in the word and it is followed by an S, you pronounce it K. Fox. Fox. If the siha is preceded by an A, O, or U, you pronounce it H comes from here. H, as in Buch. If it's preceded by an E, I, or an Umlaut, E, Ö, Ü, we pronounce it Ch, as in Bücher. Buch, Bücher. D, D. Danke. E. Leben. Geld. Here you can see again the long closed version. Leben is produced by the E followed by a consonant followed by another vowel. If we don't have that combination, it's usually short and more open. Geld. F. F. Fertig. G. G. Gerne. H. H. Haus. I. Here again we have a long version and a short version. The short version is more open, long version, minus, minus, and the short version, bitte, bitte, j, j, ja. The J can also be found in foreign words, words with a foreign origin, and in that case they're being pronounced close to the original pronunciation, for example in the words journalist, 
which is from the French, and joggen, which is from the English. Car, k, Kleid. L, I, Land. M, M, Morgen. N, N, Nacht. O, Dose. Kochen. Here you can see that pattern again. If it's followed by a consonant and then a vowel, it's long and closed. Otherwise, it's more short and open. Dose. Kochen. But not all words follow those rules, so sometimes they have an exception, like the word Obst. Here you can see it's followed by consonants only, and we still say O. Obst. P. P. Putzen. Q. Now, the Q always appears in combination with the O. Q, U, and we pronounce it KV, Kvalle, Kvalle, R, Regen. Now, the German R is produced back here, not in the front of your mouth, but if you speak a language that uses the rolled R that you can produce with your tongue and your teeth, then you can use that. There are some regions in Germany where people actually use that rolled R and they also use it in Austria and I think in Switzerland as well. So you can use that if that is the R that you're used to, if you find it too hard to produce it from here. If you produce it from the throat, it doesn't always come out in the same way. So this is normal for us Germans as well. When I say Regen, it doesn't always come out in the same way. Sometimes the R comes in a nice kind of almost rolled way. R, Regen. But sometimes it sounds more like this. R, Regen. And that happens throughout the whole language. When I speak, my R always changes. So don't worry if it doesn't always sound perfectly correct. The German R from the throat, the R, is uh, fairly close to the French R. So if you speak French, you might be used to it a bit more already. But as I said, you have a few options here. Regen. When you encounter the R at the end of a sentence, so when you have this combination E, R, then we don't really pronounce the R at all. It's an unemphasized syllable. For example, if you use the word Mutter, Mutter has an ER, but the emphasis is on the U, Mutter. You cannot hear the R at all. It's a little bit like the Schwa in English. You might be familiar with this. So when you have a word like mother, for example, and you don't pronounce it in the American way with a strong R in the end, and you say mother, and you don't hear the R either, that's very much the same in German. Mutter, any word that ends in ER. Mutter, Bruder, Schwester. That's mother, brother, sister. S. Now the S can be pronounced in different ways. One is a Z, using your voice. Z as in Suppe, Suppe. This is usually used when the S is followed by a vowel, Suppe. We also have the sharp version of the S, S, and we use that when we don't have a vowel following or when we have a double S, for example, in the word Essen, Essen, as a singular sharp S in the word fast. And when you have that combination st and also sp in the beginning of a word, so that's st or sp, then the s is actually pronounced sh. So we say stuhl, st, 
Schul and Spiel. This can also happen in the word if you have, for example, a prefix. So here you have to watch out and listen to the pronunciation and use it the way you also hear it. T. T. Tüte. U. Zug. Bus. Here as well, we have a long form and a short form. Zug, that's the long U. Usually this one we use when we have a consonant and then a vowel following the U. But you see here in the word Zug, we still use the long form. Whereas in Bus, we pretty much have the same situation. We use the short form. But the tendency is you have a vowel, then the consonant and another vowel, then it's usually long. And in the other situations, it's usually short, with some exceptions. Zug, Bus, V, F, Vogel. Now the V is usually pronounced just like an F, with some exceptions, usually words from other languages. And Klavier is such an example, where we use the V, like a V, Klavier, but most of the time it's a F, as in Vogel. For the other sound, V, we actually have our own letter, which is V, V. So watch out here, that's not a W, that's a V, 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 Wasser, Wasser. X, pronounced like a KS, X, Hexe. Y, pronounced like a Ü. Typisch. Sometimes we use the Y in words that come from other languages, and when they're followed by a vowel, we just pronounce them like a Y similar to how they're pronounced in, for example, English, but other than that, it's pronounced ü, typisch. Z, z. Now, this is one to get used to because in many languages that's a z, not for us, it's a z, it's always sharp, z. It's like a t-s, zeit, zeit. The Z is the last letter of the alphabet, but we still have four more. And three are Umlaute, which is Ä, Ö, and Ü. If you want to write them on your computer and uh, you don't have the German keyboard or uh, the, the German settings, you can just spell it A, E for Ä, O, E for Ö and UE for Ü. Ä, Ö, Ü. Ä, as for example in Ärztin. Ö, as in Böse. Öffentlich. Here you can also see we have a long form and a short form. Böse, öffentlich. And the Ü, Bücher, long, or Büchse, short. Bücher, Büchse. And then we also have that letter that looks like a B, like B, but it's actually an S. And it's called the SZ, and we always pronounce it like a sharp S. S. Here you have to watch out when there is a vowel, before that SZ, it prolongs the vowel. So, for example, we say Fuß, Fuß. If you have a double S, for example, a U and a double S, it would be Us, for example, in the word Fluss. So that's the difference here. Fuß, Fluss. 
and some letter combinations you need to know about. The E E is pronounced like a long E, as in Liebe. The E E is pronounced like the English I. I. And I is actually a word. I. Then we have the combination E U, which is pronounced OI. Eule. SCH. That is our sh. That is also a sound that can come out a bit stronger or less strong depending on the person and the region. So some people use that very strong sh and others say sh, which is closer to the English sh. Sh. Schule. And one more, when we use the NG, we produce it as one sound in the back of our mouth. So we don't say NG, we say N. It comes from here. N. And when we say NK, we use that combination that I just explained with a K in the end. So we don't say DANK. We say dank. So we form it in the throat before we even get to say N. We never really say N. When you say N, you produce the sound with the tongue in the front of your mouth. N, 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 N. But we say dank. Dank. One more thing that's important for you to know is the emphasis that we use in German. And we generally tend to emphasize our words on the first syllable. There are several exceptions, especially when we use prefixes, we emphasize on the second syllable. And then there are also a ton of words of foreign origin, of course, that are emphasized differently. So this is also something where you have to pay a bit of attention if there is an emphasis that is not following that rule. Emphasize it on the first syllable, but the tendency really is to emphasize it on the first syllable. Most of the time you will learn the pronunciation and also the emphasis by listening closely and repeating. Listen and repeat as much as you can, but I hope that this will also help you understand it a bit better.